All right. So right now, you know, I'm happy with the way it is. You know, I mean, I would I wouldn't change anything as far as baking it, but I just definitely want to show you how to bake it. Okay. Why you would bake it? Well, it would, it would save you some memory with the, if you have a weaker machine. But here's the disadvantage. If you bake it, all the textures are baked into it. So if you want to bring it into like a darker scene, it's not going to blend well. Right now, it's adaptive to light. And if I was to bring it in, like let's say uh, a closed-in cave environment or a moonlit scene, it would not be. Another thing is these faces right here. If you go here, highlight all your faces using A, have them adaptive to light, you might see a little bit better results. Not much. But if you're not seeing this change at all, when I bring a light source next to it, it's because of that. Just You, you must have that on. Okay, so here's what you need to do is you have to set up your lighting just perfect. So you can make, you know, a couple lights, you can bring them around, light your object from all angles. And sometimes it's better just to make new lights than actually reuse a light using a duplicate using Shift D. So I'm going to add a new light here. Okay, 1, 3, and 7 on your keyboard will go into your orthographics. In case you're wondering how I'm doing that real quick. Okay, so I'm just setting up my lights. Okay, once I get my lights all up and running, looks like I got one more spot right here that needs to be lit. Now you see when I'm getting a lot of light on the scene, you can definitely see all my specularity coming through. Uh, you can see how it's affecting it. And you can make changes to the overall texture to compensate for those changes. Maybe now you're, you're seeing that, well, you know, even though displacement's on, if displacement's off, it'll take and kill all my specularity. Or I can mess with it over on this level. And I can start zeroing out some of the stuff over here. I can also adjust it here under my. Okay. I'm also seeing that probably my occlusion is just a little bit too strong. My shadows are so, so dark. Now they're not strong enough. So this is a really evil fight to get it to. There we go. That's perfect right there. And notice it's not real time. I mean, I can change something over here, but it doesn't change right away. Okay, now that it's like this, what I'm going to do is go image, new. Make sure I highlight all my stuff. Image, new. Make sure 2048 by 2048. And then I'm going to go up to render, bake render meshes, and do a full render. Again, this is only important if you want to bake in shadows. 
or learn how to bake a texture. You can also take this baked material and save it as a JPEG and mount it back in the ZBrush and you can see the different results that appear. So there's my map. Okay, and just, just for giggles, I'm going to do that. Save as. See this final. That's a JPEG. Then I did this once before, but this is an updated one. See how I got. This one's a very uh, dim version of the map that I just made. So import. Final. Don't forget to texture flip it and then go over to texture. Grab that new one, which is this one. And you can see the different results. Or like night and day. This one's so blown out. Now here's the difference though. Under render, when I go into here and say shadows flat, okay, this is what the game engine is going to see if you were to just bring this in t from um, ZBrush without doing the things that I did. This is what it's going to look like in game. Now you see the difference? So it rendered all the shadows for the game engine. All right, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed the workflow. Uh, again, you know, if you want to go into game engine mode, it's P on the keyboard for Blender, and I think I got everything. All right, yep. I right. so have a good one. Again, my name is Jason Walsh, and until next video series.